the number one job, number one job of the commander in chief is to keep this country safe. And yesterday, Joe Biden literally threw the Ukrainian people under the bus by hedging and essentially, according to the Ukrainian foreign minister, giving uh, given the Russians a green light and given Putin a green light if they only make a minor incursion. Words matter when you're in this type of crisis and words matter when you're standing at the presidential podium. Now, he may have used his team to try to spin and backtrack afterwards, but Putin got the message, the Kremlin got the message, the Ukrainian people got the message. And I have to tell you, the Chinese, the North Koreans, the Iranian regime, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda and ISIS, they all got the message too. And in Ukraine in particular, instead of using deterrence, instead of stopping this aggression on the front end, we continue to hear about how tough President Biden's going to be after Russia invades. I was just out uh, in Ukraine a month ago, and I have to tell you, talking to the Ukrainian officials, you know, they said, thanks a lot. You know, it doesn't do us a lot of good to get tough after Russian tanks are sitting in our capital. And just in one year, just in one year, we have lost two allies and two democracies. Uh, and I just can't understate, and I think we need to make this connection, how much Biden's failed energy policies have played into Russian aggression. By shutting down pipelines here, by regulating fracking, by stopping drilling of American oil and gas companies, he has enriched Putin's oil and gas companies. Every time you see that price of oil, that barrel go higher and higher, Putin gets richer and richer and more and more uh, aggressive. He has also said, he said just yesterday, he makes no apologies for his decision on Afghanistan. I can think and point to you right now, tens of thousands of Afghans, freedom-loving Afghans, who stood with us against extremism, they deserve an apology. The 13 Gold Star families that weren't able to spend this past holiday with their loved ones, they deserve an apology. Our closest allies who are being hunted down as we speak, I just received a beheading video this morning. There's a veterans group who's over there right now trying to save these people on their own dime with their own aircraft because their government won't help. They deserve an apology. And the millions of Afghan girls and women, they deserve one too. Afghanistan's on the brink of starvation. Just six months ago, these people, under an imperfect government to be sure, were standing with us against extremism in line with our values. Now it's a terrorist super state led by a Taliban caliphate, and the intelligence is clear, Al-Qaeda and ISIS are developing the capability to once again strike the homeland in just under one year of this Biden presidency. Meanwhile, Iran is on the march to a nuclear weapon. We've gone from Abraham Accords, historic, amazing steps forward towards peace, to rockets flying onto Israeli cities. In China, we're on the verge of sending our athletes and, and companies to Beijing and flying the American flag, giving the Chinese Communist Party this global propaganda platform with nearly six million people dead around the world from COVID, not to mention, not to mention nearly a million Muslims in concentration camps undergoing forced rape, forced torture, and forced uh, extermination. It's an ongoing genocide as we speak and a diplomatic boycott is just a joke. Meanwhile, in the middle of that, the Chinese Navy is now larger than ours. Their Space Force is launching more into space than the rest of the world combined, including the United States. And we get from Joe Biden a defense cut, a defense cut, with uh, including inflation. And I'll just end with this. I think this president has the worst human rights record of any modern American presidency. And you may think that's an over-the-top statement, but when you have, according to international NGOs, 30 to 40% of girls being sexually assaulted or sold into human trafficking on our southern border, 
when you have, again, the forced rape, mass rape and sterilization of women in the Uyghurs, just ask the Afghan girls and just ask the Cuban people who heard nothing but silence from this White House as they stood for freedom. America and the rest of the world deserves better and they deserve American leadership. Unfortunately, we're just one year in. We have three years to go, but I don't think we can realistically expect anything but more of the same because the same team that was around then Vice President Biden and around Obama is now leading uh, our national security approach, and it is a fundamentally flawed approach of America last and concessions first. And our adversaries see that as weakness, and they see that as opportunity, and you are going to continue to see them on the march unless this president completely does a 180 degree turn. But I think with the stubbornness, with the obstinance, with the pride, uh, sadly, that we saw uh, yesterday, I don't think we can expect that. And prosperity around the world, why this matters to the American people, has been underscored by American leadership and the United States military since World War II. And that credibility is now under a serious uh, uh, and dangerous uh, erosion. We are moving, we are moving backwards uh, in the world. And with that, I will, happy note, I will stop and hand over to Whip Steve Scalise and go Knowles.